The ideal campaign structure for classic fantasy adventure games or old school renaissance games are sandbox campaigns. The sandbox is a campaign where the players get to choose what they want to interact with and how they interact with it. The open-ended nature of the sandbox can be a challenge for game masters to run. If players can go anywhere and do anything, how do you prepare? You stay prepared by focusing on the most important elements of the sandbox and adding extras when you need to or want some variety in your campaign. In this video, I'm going to teach you the most important ingredients that every sandbox campaign needs. Creating a sandbox campaign is sort of like cooking an omelet. You can make a fancy omelet with lots of ingredients, or you can make an omelet with just the basics. Whether you make a fancy one or a plain one, there are some ingredients the omelet must have. It must have basic eggs and cheese. You can add some meat, vegetables, seasonings, but without the basic egg and cheese, you don't have an omelet. Expert game masters who say sandboxes are boring or only offer an illusion of choice are trained to cook omelets without eggs. They're missing something important somewhere in their recipe. Let's talk about the ingredients you need to have in your sandbox. Every one of them are important. And if you are missing any one of them, you will probably have a failure on your hands. If you have all these ingredients, Anything you add will provide extra flavor and interest in your campaign. First, you need a home base. Characters need some place where they can heal, sell treasure, resupply adventuring gear, gather rumors and hooks for adventures. Your home base can be a town, a movable camp, or a friendly neighborhood within a dangerous city. You can introduce new locations as the campaign progresses. In old school renaissance games, the home base at the beginning of a campaign is usually a medium to large town that has the basic needs that the player characters require for adventuring. You need helpful NPCs. The majority of your helpful NPCs will be in the home base. These are the NPCs, the non-player characters, that your players will seek out for aid to buy what they need between adventures. I call them helpful rather than friendly because they might also be jerks. A fixer in the criminal world can provide the party with a safe house to lie low while they try to figure out how to get out of town and extorts more money from them when they need to stay an extra week. It is a good idea to put a few friendly NPCs in adventuring areas. A friendly druid in a forest a monk in a temple at the top of a mountain, or a hermit werebear who helps the players kill orcs and in between adventures keeps bees and makes mead. These characters create more flavor for your campaign and can be lifesavers if the party gets in trouble. Helpful NPCs are great for giving your players information, clues, and adventure hooks. Helpful NPCs can be useful to get your players moving if they've been passive and dawdling in town for too long. Create a problem for a helpful NPC. If the adventurers have come to rely on a hermit who provides them with healing magic, the players will be motivated to help when a monster has moved into his cave. You need some ambitious, active adversaries. Your sandbox needs some non-player characters, monsters, gods, or other entities that want something. What these creatures, NPCs, or entities, or monsters want, or how they go about getting it, must cause problems for your player characters, their friendly, helpful non-player characters, or the home base they rely on between adventures. The monster faction or adversary real NPC must be active. The reason why some experts say that sandbox campaigns are boring and players dawdle around town waiting for the adventure is because the experts NPCs aren't doing anything that affects the party. 
the guildmaster didn't get to his position by being lazy, he cuts purses, backstabs, and climbs his way to the top. He is ambitious and active. The guild members under him are out spying, stealing, and intimidating his enemies. Adventurers rich with treasure after a successful dungeon raid make a good target for ambitious thieves. When player characters and non-player characters want the same thing, you get conflicts that can last across years of playtime. Rival adventuring parties, high-level NPCs with a gang of minions, or the local lordsmen can provide these conflicts. The players can fight or compete with low-level minions, but their inability to take down the boss further up the chain will annoy them. If the party has several incidents with the same faction over the course of the campaign, they'll develop a bad attitude about that faction. By the time they have reached a level where they can fight a powerful faction or a powerful NPC, the players will have become quite worked up and will make an extreme effort to take out their old nemesis. You will know you are doing something right when the players say something like, we're going to have to kill that guy someday. This is anything but boring and it makes it easy for you to come up with ideas or adversaries for adventures as more of these fights accumulate in the campaign. At any given moment in a campaign, players should be aware of two or three locations for adventure and one or two problems troubling the home base and helpful NPCs. If players are only aware of one or two adventure possibilities, then your sandbox will feel like a railroad, even if it is not a railroad. If you have too many, too many adventure options available, the players can become paralyzed with choice overload. It is best to provide two or three location adventure options and one or two options involving adversarial NPCs. That gives players three to five adventure choices in total, enough for them to have real agency, but not so much to be overwhelming. The last ingredient a successful sandbox must have are opportunities and incentives for exploration. There should also be places that they can discover by exploration. The players need an incentive for exploring the areas between your known adventure locations. If players don't feel like there are fun, exciting, or interesting reasons to go exploring, they won't explore. And sandbox games are largely exploration campaigns. You want the players to feel like they can gain something from getting off the main road and checking out an unknown area. Some old school renaissance referees like to offer experience points for exploration. That works fine, but it is better to provide incentives that are connected into the game world. That makes it more immersive experience and gives players focus on playing, playing the world instead of calculating how many hexes they need to explore in order to level up. When players decide to go off-road, so to speak, rewarding exploration with the experience of discovery gets players excited and interested in further exploration. Place some encounters in locations that don't appear on their maps and they don't and they have no information about. These don't have to be full-on dungeons that take up a whole session, they can be used as brief encounters that add some seasoning. Perhaps they find a healing spring or an abandoned woodcutter's camp infested with goblins, a wise woman living in a hovel by herself, or an abandoned temple where the players can leave an offering and get a small bonus to their next attack roll. Encourage exploration by dropping small hooks as the characters travel. Monster tracks, a burned out hovel on the side of the road, a fairy or a unicorn that shows itself and then runs away when the party gets too close, a side path that looks like it might cut some time off of a trip. Summing up, you need a home base where the players can heal, refit, and prepare for their next adventure. You need helpful NPCs who provide aid, information, resources, and adventure hooks. You want to have ambitious, active adversaries who become enemies to the player characters over the course of the campaign and cause them problems. 
you need a minimum of three active adventuring possibilities so the players don't feel railroaded, but no more than five so they don't feel like they're overwhelmed with choices. Provide opportunities and incentives to leave the home base. This was a very general overview of what you need to have in your sandbox. You probably have a lot of questions and a great way to get those questions answered is to drop your question in the comments below. I've written an in-depth explanation of how I make sandboxes. And if you sign up for my email newsletter, you will get a PDF describing that process. There is a link in the information box below. If you thought that was a good video and you would like to have some more information about how to make adventures or encounters, you can watch these other videos. Thanks for watching.